Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, the Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. Today we'll talk about some possible resources you can use alongside your Come Follow Me reading for May 16th through 22nd, various chapters from the book of Deuteronomy. The first is called The Great Commandment by Howard Christie, who is a senior editor of BYU Scholarly Publications, and this comes from a Religious Educator article. We have heard a lot about the two great commandments, to love God and love our neighbor. And he points out their Old Testament origins from the book of Deuteronomy and from the book of Leviticus. And he talks a little bit about the universality of the great commandment, particularly focusing a lot on loving one another. And he talks about the importance of this commandment going beyond platitude and, and really doing the service and work to help others. That is certainly a major theme we see throughout the Old Testament of serving and helping the poor and the downtrodden. The second article is called Worship, Bowing Down and Serving the Lord. It's by Jennifer Lane, a former BYU-Hawaii religion professor, and it comes from a Sperry Symposium presentation. And in this article, she focuses primarily on two Hebrew words for bow down and serve, hava and avad, and these are often translated as worship in the King James Version. And so she talks about how they have slightly different meanings, bow down obviously having a more specific physical movement associated with it. Uh, she notes the noun form of hishtach ava, which is a physical enactment of one's relationship with a superior. And it's meant to be an outward expression of an inward attitude. And it's literally to bow down prostrate oneself, to make obeisance, or to bend low. And so she points out some scriptures and examples of where this is found, uh, such as Abraham uh, offering his son Isaac and others uh, where that's found. And the other term, avad, is usually translated as to work, but it also, particularly in a temple context, can have the sense of to serve to do the Lord's work. And so she talks about it in its temple context, as well as talks about it as a way of life, an example of covenant faithfulness. Probably what we would use today is staying on the covenant path. And she discusses also how servants or evid, or evid is, the, is servant. Um, these are examples of an instrument in the Lord's hands to accomplish his work and bring about his righteousness. And so both these terms deal a lot with worship in the Old Testament context. The third article is called Teaching Old Testament Laws by Robert Lund, who is a CES curriculum writer. And this comes from a religious educator article. And this fits with uh, Deuteronomy because as Deuteronomy is called, it's the second telling of the law, Deuteronomos. And so he talks about how as teachers, often it's a task to find a way to teach Old Testament laws and make them relevant for students, for listeners. And so he focuses on finding relevant principles and how those can help as you're teaching. And one aspect that he brings out is that one can focus on Moses as kind of the leader or head of the church or the religion of the day and also the leader of the government. And so as a natural manifestation of that leadership, he's going to give various laws and rules for the people. And then he talks about how it could be helpful to classify each law and identify its underlying principle. What's the principle behind the law? And he categorizes the laws into four different categories, eternal laws, preparatory or carnal laws, criminal or civil laws, and health or social laws. And then he, in each section, talks about examples of these different laws and how some of them are still obviously very relevant to today, the eternal laws and things like honesty and loving others and not killing, these kinds of things. 
then he talks about how some are preparatory or maybe were for a time period. Criminal laws, you know, still also can be very applicable to today. And then health or social laws, some may be still relevant, some are from a different culture in a different time period about cleanliness and um, giving birth and relationships between family members or among family members or uh, other society uh, members. And he ends with kind of a, a plea, I guess you could say, to avoid being critical of Old Testament laws. Sometimes it's easy to denigrate them as not that important and not that relevant. And so uh, to find the relevance and find the principles within them can help us appreciate uh, their purposes and, and what they helped the ancient Israelites accomplish.